And we're now joined by a special guest, a saint for life here today in Tice Thompson. And Tice, thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having me. So uh, first and foremost, I, I have to ask, what have you been doing to, to keep busy right now? I know we were just talking before the interview, it's kind of boring, everything's been shut down, but what have you been doing to try to stay active? Yeah, I mean, there's not really a whole lot I can do. Um, obviously, this is a good time to spend time with the family. Uh, I've been playing a lot of games and watching movies with them. So taking advantage of the family time that we have here has, uh, has been nice. Um, in terms of like getting out of the house, a couple courses are open. So I'm going to golf uh, quite a bit, which has been nice, but nothing, nothing too serious. Um, just trying to stay safe and stay at home. How's the golf game coming? Uh, could be better. Yeah, always but, could be. Any good, so, round, yeah. any, any good rounds, any good shots you, you're willing to share with people or – uh, yeah, it's still too early. Yeah, it's still too early. But <laughs> how about on the? Uh, you mentioned watching movies. Have you watched any movies or shows you would recommend to people who they can uh, what they can do on their weekends? Maybe. Yeah, I've been uh, binge watching uh, Money Heist. Uh, so that's been a good one so far. Yeah, I just started watching that a couple of days ago. I'm only on season one. I'm assuming you're much further along yeah. than that. No, I'm I'm actually towards the end of season one. I just okay. started it. So. Yeah. Gotcha. Have you, uh, everyone I've asked so far has said they've watched Ozark. Are you an Ozark fan? Have you gotten into that yet? I, I started it, but I, I'm not usually too good with shows, so I haven't been keeping up with that. But uh, this, I, like, I like Money Heist a lot. There you go. This might be the one time that I can actually yeah. keep up with a show consistently. Uh, so let's dive into the hockey side of things a little bit. Obviously, uh, you were a fighting saint, but you went to Providence after your first year with the Saints. This was year two at Providence. Overall, what was year two like for you? Yeah, I think anytime you're at a place for more than just one year, uh, it helps. I mean, you're a lot more comfortable uh, with the environment that you're in. Um, I mean, Providence is a great school. I uh, I really enjoy it there um, and the hockey program as well. So I've I've been uh, blessed and pretty fortunate to be a part of part of that organization there at with the Friars and the school too. So. We were looking at the the national charts in terms of point leaders, and for a time there, it was you, then Jack Dugan, back and forth, just bouncing over each other, leapfrogging each other at the top of the charts. What was it like to watch the season that he had up close for you? Yeah, I mean, he's an unbelievable player, also my roommate. Um, so I had a great uh, opportunity to know him and play with him uh, over these past two years. And, and just to watch him on the ice, I mean, it's pretty special. Um, he has a great vision and, and the way he uh, makes plays and, and sees plays develop before they even happen is something special and definitely a gift. So, uh, I mean, I think everything that he got this year, he definitely deserved. And uh, he, he's, he's a special player. You two being roommates, was there any friendly competition, friendly banter back of the room go, going forth? Who was going to get more points the next game or anything like that? Yeah, uh, maybe a little bit. Um, just a little internal competition, trying to beat each other uh, here and there. Uh, but, no, I mean, ultimately both of our mindset was team-oriented um, and what we could do best to help the team. I know you said the mindset is team oriented, but when you look at just the, the numbers that you put up your first season, you had 25 points in 42 games this season, you had 44 points in 34 games. What changed from year one to year two to lead you to that big jump? I think uh, just being more comfortable and confident with uh, the college hockey. I think uh, freshman year, I mean, it's obviously tough coming in. You're playing against a lot of older and, and stronger guys that you're not really used to. Um, so that that challenge was definitely tough freshman year and I think everyone kind of takes time to adjust and then coming in this year I think uh, I had a big summer I got a lot stronger and bigger and I think that helped and then just overall confidence um, knowing like what I can do and and what how I could play at this level. The other stat that jumped out to me as I'm looking at the elite prospects page was you had 19 goals this season and the furthest I can scroll back on elite prospects is 2014-15 uh, I believe and that was for uh, Connecticut Wolfpack 16U when you had 16 goals so this is the most goals in a single season that shows up on elite prospects for you what led to you suddenly putting the puck in the back of the net so much? Yeah I don't really know um, I've always usually been a a pass first uh, kind of guy. And I, I think this year, going into this year, I've, I wanted to uh, shoot more and add that to my game. So I'll um, have that as well. So I think this year I was trying to shoot the puck more. And I think whenever, I mean, when you shoot the puck on that, I mean, good things happen, even though they may not always be nice goals or whatever. But I think that, and then plus I was fortunate to play with some great players this year, um, as well as in the past. But um, I think that helps a lot too. 
were you working on just shooting more or also working on getting some more power on your shot as well when you talk about just working on that aspect of the game? Yeah, I think just, I mean, getting in the puck off quick as soon as you can, uh, just being able to have a good release and the goal, catch the goalie uh, sleeping or, or not moving uh, fast enough. So I think that's the big thing as long as you get it on that quick. So the first time we spoke was at last year's NHL draft in Vancouver. Uh, I was fortunate enough to work it for the USHL. You obviously fortunate enough to be drafted by the Devils 96th overall. Uh, when you heard your name called, just take us back to that moment and what the emotions were like. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, it's been a dream uh, for since I was a little kid to be drafted into the NHL. And then that, that, uh, that night uh, we were sitting up there and I was with uh, a lot of my family from Arizona. Um, and then, uh, my dad's fa our family friends from, uh, Canada, they, uh, they came out too. So it was nice. I had a big support crew there. And, um, honestly, when I, we weren't really paying too much attention at that moment. Um, and then I just heard my name. I really didn't know who, who, who picked me. So it was kind of funny walking down. I didn't really know where I was going. Um, but I finally uh, realized it and it's, I mean, I'm ecstatic to be part of, uh, the devil's organization. I couldn't ask for a better better place to be with and uh i'm excited for the future and the devils that's that's pretty close to your backyard that's almost your backyard right that's pretty close to home if i'm yeah, not mistaken. yeah it's only it's only about probably two hours away so it's pretty close yeah i looked it up on maps and it said an hour but i'm sure you're saying two hours because it never takes an hour to travel anywhere yeah. around new york yeah i know it's the travel's brutal here yeah. there's always traffic unfortunately i know now it's you know for new yorkers it's probably great that traffic's down but obviously this is not the circumstances you would want to see it under but yeah, this is maybe one of the only times that it's a true hour to get there um right. you were mentioning that you got drafted by the devils didn't really know but now it's a team from in your backyard um have you had a lot of contact with them since you were drafted and what has that process been like maybe talking to some of their coaches what they want to see from you things along along those lines yeah, I mean, obviously at Prospect Camp, um, you get to know a lot of the staff and, and the players and prospects there too. So that helps. And just to learn from them has been nice. Um, but in terms of during the season and as a recent, um, in terms of talking with the team uh, or the staff there, uh, it's mostly just player development guys that will come out and watch games. And I'll talk to them um, and give me little tips and see how everything's going. But nothing major. It's, it's kind of nice to just let me play and uh, kind of like wait till, wait till the time is right. You know, with, with no hockey games going on, with no real organized events at all, what have you been doing on your end to continue at least a little bit of maybe maintaining yourself in shape or in a hockey shape or anything like that? Yeah, I've actually been fortunate uh, to have a, a local uh, or the guy I usually train with uh, set up a little place where we go and work out, just me and my brother. So we go uh, four days a week in the morning and just, just go and lift and try to continue staying in shape the best we can. Um, while while this whole thing is going on hockey in the morning tea time in the afternoon yeah yeah I mean we're just working out right now uh but that's that seems to be the the play um I usually have uh online school though I have to take care of which yeah smart smart to throw that one in right before the the yeah. working out in the golf that's a good good plug there yeah I have to add that in. <laughs> as we uh as we talk about hockey let's throw it back to Dubuque and you spent one season there what do you remember most about your junior experience with the Fighting Saints yeah I mean Dubuque's a great spot if anybody gets the opportunity to play there and, and first class organization in the USHL and from top to bottom they really care about the players um and treat treat them um, like their own so it was definitely special I had great billets there and great teammates so I made a lot of memories there with with them and uh, yeah I couldn't have asked for a better place or, or year to play my junior what aspects of your game improved the most in that season that allows you to be comfortable enough to make the jump to college hockey yeah I think going there um, I had an expectation to play uh, a top role there and that kind of bounced around during the year. So I think I really learned how to play all areas of the game, uh, really rounded myself in a more versatile player, um, being able to play a fourth line, third line, top six, whatever, PK, power play. So being put in those different situations throughout the whole year, I thought was great for my development because um, you're not always going to have the same role wherever you go. Do you have a favorite memory or, or one memory that kind of sticks out above the rest when you think back on your time at Dubuque and it can be on the ice or off the ice or both? Yeah, I mean, anytime we were we were in the locker room on the ice together or just together as a team, I mean, it was, it was a blast. So 
that was always great. But I really enjoyed typically Thursdays after practice, we would go have uh, a lot of the guys would go over to Ichiban, uh, have team hibachi. Uh, and then we would go over to uh, Casey Stoms and Scott Corbett's house to play uh, poker and, and watch TV. So that was, I really enjoyed those days. It's funny. I think you're the, the fourth or fifth former player I've interviewed, and every single player has mentioned something about poker night. So it's still yeah. a tradition that continues yeah. on today. Uh, yeah. You're the first one that mentioned Ichiban, but that also continues as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so looking at the USHL and how much it develops players for college hockey, I was looking at Providence roster this season. 22 of 29 players on the roster came from the USHL. Uh, who of those that you were able to play with this year or last year were you most excited to to play with that you maybe played against in the USHL? Yeah, I mean, actually, Providence has quite a bit of uh, debut guys coming coming through there, so that's always nice to see. Um, but, I mean, I couldn't really think off, off the top of my head uh, who I really uh, was excited to play with. Uh, typically, when I play against them, I don't really like too many of the guys. <laughs> uh, but once once they're on your team, uh, they're good guys, and it's it's nice to meet them and get to know them. You mentioned the Fighting Saints connection this season. Shane Cavanaugh and Spencer Young, the captain for Providence, and he actually just signed a pro contract with the Milwaukee Admirals today. But they both played uh, for the Fighting Saints and now on Providence. What's it like to have that connection where you both can bond over your time in Dubuque and then also be part of another team in Providence? Yeah, I mean, I actually had the chance to go down there as an affiliate. And uh, I mean, they're older, so they were there before me. Uh, but go down as an affiliate and uh, kind of hang around them. And then coming into this the past two years, uh, having those guys around, uh, kind of like talk about our times in Dubuque for sure, uh, whether it was poker night or, or just little things that happened or talking about other teammates that we, we played with uh, in Dubuque. Um, but no, I mean, they all have nothing but great things to say about Dubuque, and I, I don't blame them. Any talk of doing a, a Providence poker night with you, Kavanaugh, and Young? <laughs> No talk yet, but I I would like that. Maybe you can get a virtual poker night going on Zoom or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I have to. Um, when, when you look at and uh, again, thanks for joining us on the the show today. Yeah. But when you look at what you're going to be doing between now and, and hopefully when another season starts, what are two one or two things in your mind that you really want to focus on so that you're best prepared for year three? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is just getting stronger. Uh, um, so I think over the summer just working out and putting on weight and strength is going to be the biggest thing um and then just different things on the, on the ice small details like uh your release or uh tipping or just little different skill drills that you can do on the ice are different things that hopefully will prepare me for next year well tice thanks so much for taking the time to uh, join us good to know that you're at home staying safe and uh working on the golf game yeah. as, as well uh, I'm trying to work on that as well, too. And like you said, it's it's slow progress. So maybe by the end of this all, we'll have a couple shots that we're actually proud of. But again, right. thanks for taking the time. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing what you're able to do uh, the next time out on the ice with Providence. All right. Thanks, Jack. Take care.